Welcome to the mini-module Foundations of Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, the critical features of Tier 2 interventions. This mini-module is brought to you by Connecticut State Education Resource Center, or CERC, with funding from the Connecticut School Climate Transformation Grant. The U.S. Department of Education awarded Connecticut the grant in 2014, and CERC and the Connecticut State Department of Education subsequently undertook a statewide analysis of multi-tiered systems of support. This analysis attempted to identify strengths of implementation, as well as areas for improvement that could be targeted through improved training and technical assistance. This module will provide foundational information through which schools can improve implementation. In order to conduct the analysis of multi-tiered systems, the Connecticut State Department of Education selected the Tiered Fidelity Inventory as the instrument. The Tiered Fidelity Inventory, or TFI, was developed as part of the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Special Education Programs National Technical Assistance Center on Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. The TFI measures how school personnel are applying the core features of school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports. It is intended to provide a valid, reliable, and efficient measure over the three tiers of intervention. During the course of analysis, 175 facilitated sessions were held in schools across Connecticut, where school teams analyzed their process. Several common themes emerged from the aggregate data from items on the tiered fidelity inventory. We would like to acknowledge that content and best practices were gleaned from the tool as well as resources from pbis.org and nepbis.org websites. We also want to acknowledge the Mindsets and Behaviors document published by the American School Counselor Association. The goal of this mini-module is for participants to identify the critical features of a Tier 2 intervention as outlined by the Tiered Fidelity Inventory. Tier 2 interventions are targeted group interventions that are readily available to students who need additional support to gain a skill. Tier 2 interventions can be academic or behavioral depending on the student need. School teams can identify the types of interventions that should be available for students by examining aggregate data over time and identifying patterns in the data. As with all data, it is important to interrogate the screening process to ensure that students identified in need are not being subject to biased processes. Furthermore, when selecting evidence-based interventions, it is important to ensure that they are indeed matched to the needs identified, useful with the student population in your setting, and when implemented, are culturally and contextually appropriate. As mentioned, the goal of this mini-module is to identify the critical features of a Tier 2 intervention. There are three critical features. Additional instruction and time for skill development, additional structure and predictability, and increased opportunity for feedback. We will review each of these features in more detail throughout the module. The first of the three critical features is additional instruction and time for skill development. Students who have demonstrated a need that is not being met by the core curriculum or Tier 1 approaches will need additional explicit instruction on the skill. Research suggests that approximately 20% of students will need additional support to be successful. 15% of those students benefit from targeted supports and 5% benefit from more individualized supports. By first determining the standard by which student performance is measured, the school team can determine the appropriate intervention and goals for the intervention. Some examples of standards might include the Common Core, the American School Counselor Association Mindsets and Behaviors, or your state and community's identified standards. It will be vitally important that when referring students for additional support that the targeted skill gap is identified and tied to the standard so that the intervention selected can be matched precisely to that need. Let's look at an example. For the purposes of our example, we are using the American School Counselor Association Mindsets and Behaviors as the performance standard, much like you might use the Connecticut Core Standard for reading, the Common Core, or other state or local standard. Students X, Y, and Z all share a gap in social skill number two, 
the ability to create positive and supportive relationships with other students. In order to provide a Tier 2 intervention, we should identify the specific skill necessary to meet that standard. A first step in creating a relationship could be initiating conversations with classmates. For students X, Y, and Z, that is the first skill they need to practice to improve their ability to meet that standard. In our example, when seated across from their peers in the lunchroom, students X, Y, and Z have trouble initiating a conversation and often put their heads down until the lunchroom aide comes to the table to assist. We could hypothesize that students X, Y, and Z do not initiate the conversation and engage in the withdrawal behaviors to avoid an aversive interaction. In this case, the explicit instruction would be to teach conversation starters to this small group as a way to initiate conversation with their peers. Students X, Y, and Z will be explicitly taught how to use the conversation starters during the intervention. The conversation starters should be culturally and contextually appropriate for the students involved. One way to improve cultural and contextual fit is to involve families in the intervention planning. Asking about student interests and what they like to talk about outside of school can support the conversations being linked to student interests and are therefore meaningful for them. The next critical feature is the presence of additional structure and predictability. A quality Tier 2 intervention happens consistently and with ongoing reminders and explicit instruction in the intervention that is closely linked to core curriculum. The adults involved in the student's educational program are active participants in ensuring that students receive the additional instruction. The instruction has explicit plans to ensure the skill occurs outside of intervention. Let's revisit our example with students X, Y, and Z. Students X, Y, and Z likely would start in a lunch bunch where a staff member, such as a school social worker, is supporting their selection of a conversation starter and facilitating the process so that all get to practice the skill. This intervention may take place in the social worker's office so that the students have an opportunity to practice without the distractions that may occur in the cafeteria. As time goes on and the students demonstrate more confidence with the use of the conversation starter, the social worker may support the use of the conversation starters in the natural setting by moving the session to the cafeteria, but perhaps at a separate table. The social worker might ask students X, Y, and Z to invite other members of the class who are not enrolled in the intervention to sit with them while they continue to practice. Over time, the process may shift to the classroom teacher to prompt the skill. The teacher may first support the process through intentional grouping at lunch. Then the teacher may prompt the students to review their card before lunch and select a conversation starter to use with their peers. When the students arrive in the lunchroom, the lunch aide may monitor the table to ensure the students are practicing the skill. It is critical that all of the adults who interact with the students, including the lunch aide, have the information necessary to support the students. The third critical feature is focused on increasing the feedback students participating in the intervention receive. It is essential for students acquiring a new skill to have additional feedback on their progress. Feedback should increase in frequency, and the feedback should have significant emphasis on the targeted skills being acquired. It should be as specific as possible and name the behavior, skill, and or use of the tool depending on the structure of the intervention and the skill targeted for improvement. In addition, specific acknowledgement strategies should be included. These strategies should be informed by conversations with the student and family in order to encourage the use of the skill and ensure the cultural and contextual fit. Students are more likely to respond positively if the acknowledgement strategy is keyed to their interests. Let's revisit our example again. If the classroom teacher observes student X reviewing their conversation starter card prior to lunch, the teacher should acknowledge the student for using the tool provided. An example might sound like, Student X, I am thrilled to see you using your conversation starter card. Can you share with me what prompt you will use today at lunch? The teacher has provided specific, positive feedback for Student X by naming the use of the tool provided and prompting the next step, which is the selection of the actual conversation prompt. When Student X arrives in the lunchroom, the lunch aide could acknowledge Student X for using the selected conversation starter. Over time, the prompting should fade, but the acknowledgement should continue to reinforce the development and continued use of the skill. 
Feedback should be constructive in nature and positively stated so that it is continually reminding students of what we want them to do. Another example of this feedback could be, the teacher observes student Y using the conversation starter cards four out of five opportunities in the week. At the end of the week, student Y is able to spend 15 minutes doing a preferred activity that was selected with student and family input during the intervention planning. If constructive feedback is required, the teacher might say to student Z, I noticed you were struggling with starting a conversation with your friend. How about we try one of those sentence starters you've been practicing with Mrs. A? Can I help you pick one? The teacher could also practice with student Z some of the sentence starters and strategies to carry on a conversation to help student Z select the one that works best. In order to ensure increased skill acquisition, we need to make sure our Tier 2 interventions include the critical features noted in this module additional instruction and time for skill development, additional structure and predictability, and increased opportunity for feedback. Ensuring that selected interventions include the critical features and are culturally and contextually appropriate is vital to securing the anticipated impact on student performance. Thank you for participating in this mini-module and working to improve the quality of multi-tiered systems of support.